said patience is, is one of them. Each perseveres to teach patience and, and to overcome our, our fear of something bigger, something different. And all we have to do is be alongside of a horse, uh, not just ride him, but be with him. And, and a horse is a very powerful animal. But in spite of that, by and large, they're very quiet. They're, most of them have very quiet nature, and they have ways of getting along with each other. And I think, you know, that's the wisdom of the horse, to teach us those kind of characteristics that we probably don't see in other people. We started the um, equine program working with our Horse Nation relatives uh, a number of years ago. We had our first camp, actually 12 years ago. We found out that youth were really interested in spending time with horses, but actually had no access to them. So we decided that we needed to put together a program where they could learn to reestablish their relationship with our Horse Nation relatives in a safe manner, in a way that would really uh, allow them to reestablish their place as being a relative um, in the natural world. And we also decided that part of that needed to be a healing process because we were known as a horse people. We were known as people that had a, 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 a very close relationship with, our, with the horses in our lives. And they, they took care of us and, and we in turn took care of them. And so we wanted our youth to be able to recognize that in a safe way, no matter where they went, no matter what horses they were around, they could relate to them in a safe manner and also with respect and honor. We established this program so that our youth could learn to be respectful and to be good relatives to the horse nation. Okay, put a circle around his eye. So I've done a lot of research on the symbols um, that pertain to our horses. And so I've done uh, research through anthropological research papers. I've been able to visit and uh, check out the archives, the, the paintings, the ledger art that exists at the Smithsonian and the Chicago Field Museum, the Joslin Museum in Omaha. And so I've compiled a list of almost 30 different designs that uh, we have incorporated into our horses. I also explain um, the horse as a mode of transportation and how that's evolved. And I also explain the horse gear that is sewn and tied and, and added as adornment and uh, to explain the exploits and deeds carried out by the horse as well as the rider, the warrior himself. Pull right. You pull left, you pull right. The research that I've done um, helps, of course, uh, benefit, explain a way of life um, that was taken away from us. And so we incorporate these cultural teachings, this cultural knowledge, and reinstill it into uh, an artistry form today because we no longer ride against uh, anybody. And so uh, explaining that our symbolism still exists you know you can see paintings contemporary paintings you can look at the old ledger art and somebody has to be around to explain all the symbolism and so the stories that coincide was actually our written language is the symbols and the designs and the color concepts the numerology that's incorporated into our horses it explains and tells the stories of exploits and deeds of uh, warriors that was uh, carried out long ago. And so they coincide with a lot of our songs because our songs still exist. They're still singing these songs that are hundreds of years old. And within these songs that we call, we call uh, Wakdigli, they're recounting, they're, they're telling the exploits and deeds of uh, past warriors. And so along with the songs, that's where I come in with all the horse gear and everything else. So it is possible, right? But you have to live that way, and you have to earn these things, right? We Lakota didn't always have horses. They came to us probably just before 1700. But once they came, they became a very natural part of our culture. If there was ever 
a more natural relationship that we adapted. It was it was the one with horses. Yeah. Um, it enabled us to be um, better hunters. I mean, we were always hunters. We were always nomadic, but it enabled us to do all those things better. And it was a very symbiotic relationship. And and I think with this particular program, it's horses are there to teach, to teach patience, to teach perseverance, to teach uh, characteristics that we otherwise wouldn't learn without them. Once we learn about what a horse is and how a horse functions and, and thinks and feels, then it, it helps us to form a relationship with another kind of being. And I think that's, that's what the horse brings, is it enables us to it helps us to to bridge that gap between one species and another, and I think um, horses today, like in the past, they've always made us better and stronger, and that's what this horse program is all about. I have fun. Um, Pretty much assisted in the, uh, the uh, songs that are associated with the horses. I've done uh, research in various different documents, such as the Densmore Collection, Walker, Rhodes, and anything associated with the, the horse. Story wise, I have uh, presented those for these students that come here at these youth. When we were younger, we were kids, we that was just part of who we were, was horses. I mean, I remember riding horses with no bridles and they were trained to respond to your legs and your clicking of your tongue and talking to the horse. And so all that interrelationship we, we share with the youth to give them ideas about how, how that friendship with a horse eases a lot of your tension and also you learn to respect power, you know. You learn more about the uh, the horse's behaviors, and, and you develop an association. And most of it, uh, for me, was a lot of youth that, that need that type of therapy. And so it enables them to be able to get it here. So that's very important. I come to our wonderful camp here, uh, Wichoti Tiwahe, down in Melk's camp. And I come here to tell stories, and I tell stories uh, of the horse, of how empowering it is, and it, it raised our stature, and, and how it is a good uh, communication being. So those that uh, don't want to speak to authority or get any kind of uh, help from elders probably because of their own lifestyle or the way that they want to be individuals. But at some point they have to get uh, information of how to put a halter on or how to brush a horse, the proper methods and all of those things require uh, information. So uh, I tell about uh, the stories of my grandparents who had many, many, many horses. And many of these horses that are at our camp were given to me as uh, gifts for being an elder or uh, somebody loved a, a good talk that I gave and gave me a thoroughbred horse and I gave it on here. And because I have no place to keep it as well as they keep them here. And they get brushed and they get well cared for. And, and from that day, when we get a horse, I go over there and I pray for the horse and the family because they're splitting from a friend. So I pray for them and pray with them that we're gonna take care of the horse really well. And, and we bless the horse and we bless the family because they're party. Uh, I know that about my, my animals when one passes away, it feels like I lost a relative. Yes, uh, and we tell the children that. You know, some of us have so great of feelings for our animals that it's hard when we lose them. But you have, you'll have you always have a friend here, I said to them. You know, you'll always have these horses here. Our horse program is really intended for our Lakota youth.
However, we found that has been very beneficial for not only youth and learning healthy boundaries and healthy relationships and life skills, but also for those adults that may be experiencing uh, PTSD or trauma. And it certainly has been beneficial for youth that have dis various types of disabilities. So we found that we have a, a growing, uh, growing population of people that could truly benefit from this type of work. I think our Lakota youth benefit most by learning that our Horse Nation relatives are really there to guide us and to be a support. I think they come into it having various levels of trauma or negative experiences with horses and just basic fear of something that's 1,100 pounds of mostly muscle and coming away understanding that with compassion and gentleness and respect that you can have a very close relationship with something that is very powerful. And I think that in itself is empowering. It helps them to realize that no matter how, someone, how big someone is, if you can develop a relationship with them, you can also share that power. I think the most important mes message our Horse Nation relatives have to share with us is to be true. To be true to yourself, your spirit, and who you are as a human being, as who you are as walking this earth. Our horses do nothing less. Everything they do is true and honest and completely within who they are. And if we can learn that, we can grow some positive, powerful human beings.